So I want to start with this. You are obviously in a very uh, reporting on a very difficult story yeah. right now. Uh, you're very composed, and yet I heard on your way out here you were at LAX oh, and yeah. you lost your composure. You heard about this? Yes. Uh, so I ran into Joe Biden. Right. So uh, the backstory is: first of all, Joe Biden's like sitting by himself at LAX, by himself, 100% by himself, wearing the aviators in the corner, <laughs> and I'm like, that's Joe Biden. Yeah. So I'm like, I gotta go talk to Joe Biden. The backstory is: my father-in-law in 1987, 88 worked on his presidential campaign. They were close. My wife told me we hung out with the Biden kids a lot. Like, great memories. So I'm like, I gotta go tell him this. <laughs> So I go up to Joe Biden and I say, hey, Mr. Vice President, I'm Jacob Soboroff from MSNBC. How are you? Hey, great to see you. So then I got nervous and I said to him, uh, my daughter, I don't have a daughter, uh, <laughs> is my father-in-law's wife. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and then I said it again. I was like, my daughter is my father-in-law's wife. And he like wasn't responding. And he kind of like takes the aviators and he looks over and I was like, oh, my, my wife is my wife and my father-in-law is my father. I was like, he's like, oh, how are they? Tell him I said hello. So I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, if you're watching tonight and I'll, I'll never do that so, again. That's uh, so, yeah, that's like you were asking him a riddle. It was yeah. bad. <laughs> I was very hey, man, My wife is my daughter-in-law is my father, so who's the doctor? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so you actually had been doing, even before the family separation policy went in place, you had been uh, doing a wonderful piece about the border. Yeah. And you've been down there, and you actually uh, spent time on every mile of uh, the U.S.-Mexico border. 2,000 miles, yeah. Uh, which is incredible. And you, of course, I think we all have this image of the border based on the news reporting we see. Uh, you actually went down there and saw a different story than the sort of outrageous things we hear every day on the news. It, it really is unbelievable to me to hear about how people, particularly the president, talk about what is going on down on the border as if it is just the most lawless, crazy area you've ever been to. It's some of the most wonderful people I've ever met uh, in my entire life. Some of the safest cities in America are along the southern border. The idea that drugs are flowing in where there's no walls is factually incorrect. If the president took some time to read his own DEA reports, he would know that violence is not flowing across the border. He would know that drugs are coming in through legal ports of entry, and he would know that MS-13 is a tiny, 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 tiny percent of the people that come through. And the poli I mean, basically, they make policies that rip children away from their families and are truly ripping apart the fabric of society based on uh, nonsense. Now, you actually, you mentioned you met great people. Uh, this was, this is a true thing that happened. Uh, explain what happened, but this is a man who saw you. Yeah, that's true. This and he, <laughs> he swam across to you to offer you... Shrimp. Shrimp. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is the Rio Grande, where the Rio Grande meets uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, that's the very eastern, southeasternmost point of the U.S. border. And this guy uh, calls across to me, and he's like, hey, buddy. And I was like, hey. And he's like, do you want some shrimp? <laughs> and I said, yeah, come across. I'll take some shrimp. So the guy in that um, cooler uh, also were uh, limes, and that's the hot sauce right there. <laughs> uh, and so for, for five bucks, the whole thing with the militarized border and just all this divisiveness we've been seeing, the guy swam across and just blew my mind about everything that we, you, know, you think you know about what's going <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah. So I thank this man very much. It was yeah. delicious. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you've never. Yeah, I've never once heard Trump say they're sending their shrimp. No, no shrimp. <laughs> so you mentioned that the drugs are actually coming through the ports of entry that right. exist. Based on that, are, is what you're saying that a wall, wall, you know, sort of as a symbol seems like uh, a show of strength, would not actually fix any of the problems right now as far as the drug trade goes. Yeah, no. Uh, and, and people, you know, shouldn't be surprised when they... The president knows this. It's in the DEA reports that he gets. Um, and, and he continues to say over and over again, by the way, it also is not going to stop the vast majority of people that are coming to this country uh, illegally. The majority of people that come into the country illegally uh, fly here uh, from Asia, for the most part, and overstay their visas. And no wall is going to stop people flying in, um, you know, obviously from Asia.